Hi everyone, you have definitely heard about the so-called fugu fish or puffer fish. This kind of fish is very expensive and it's a pretty straightforward way to die. In the early 20th century, 80% of poisoning with fugu were lethal. Maybe you have also heard something about sodium channels in human body that are vital for the normal functioning of our cells. In fact, both of these things are closely related to each other and today I will answer a question that probably many people have. Why fugu fish can be lethal for humans? Let's begin with one story that happened several years ago in the beautiful city of Singapore. A 35-year-old Japanese lady with no significant past medical history has reported to the emergency department with giddiness and weakness in the left arm and both legs. She complained of numbness and tingling sensation around the mouth areas. Surprisingly, there were no gastrointestinal symptoms like vomit. The symptoms occurred an hour later after having fugu sashimi for lunch at a local Japanese restaurant. That fish she ate was fugu. It is an unofficial name of Tetradontidae family. This family includes many familiar species which are morphologically similar to the closely related porcupine fish with large external spines. We can typically find them in coastal regions of the tropics such as the Indian Ocean and in the South Pacific. They are relatively uncommon in the temperate zone and completely absent from cold waters. Even with its long history of toxic effects, the fish is still considered a delicacy, especially in Japan. However, fugu is prepared by licensed puffer fish cooks and only in Japan. Interestingly, the restaurant preparation of fugu is strictly controlled by law in Japan and several other countries and only chefs who have qualified after three and more years of rigorous training are allowed to prepare this kind of fish. Despite this, up to 50 deaths annually occur in Japan from puffer fish poisoning. But let's get back to our poor lady. Or maybe not as poor, since a fugu fish costs between 1000 and 5000 yen per kilo, which is 8 to 40 dollars. Immediately after eating fugu, her heart and respiratory rates were absolutely stable. She also remained conscious and alert, but on examination she had decreased power over her limbs. She was even unable to get up from the bed to walk. Initially doctors gave her antipsychotic and antiemetic therapy, but it didn't have any positive effect. Then she was given activated charcoal. It is a happy end story, because the symptoms disappeared on the next day. Luckily, that Japanese woman ate not that much fish soup the day before, but what if she was way hungrier? The symptoms of the intoxication with puffer fish toxin are more than scary. Puffer fish poisoning toxicity results from consumption of incorrectly prepared puffer soup, fugu chiri, and sometimes from eating raw puffer meat, sashimi fugu. While chiri may be more luckily to cause death, sashimi fugu often causes lightheadedness, numbness on the lips and often eaten for this reason. The toxin cannot be deactivated by heat, cooking or drying as it is heat stable and water soluble. Patients with puffer fish poisoning usually develop symptoms within 30 minutes to 6 hours of ingestion with recovery usually in 24 hours if they are luckily enough. The duration, rapidity of onset and severity of symptoms are dependent on the quantity of the consumed fish. Clinical features include headache, body numbness, vomiting, pain and lack of coordination. In more severe cases, muscle paralysis may develop. Death results from respiratory failure and cardiovascular collapse and in severe cases can occur as early as 17 minutes after ingestion. The most shocking is that the person remains conscious and alert throughout the whole intoxication. And what the devil is there in this fish killer? How does it function and how can we treat it? To understand it, let's talk a little bit about our nervous system at the molecular level. We know that neurons are the cells that build up the nervous system. We need them because they transmit the signals that come from and to our brain. These signals are responsible for our feelings, our movements, emotions and basically everything that our body does and feels. But there is one little problem. Neurons need to communicate with each other. It means that one neuron should be able to transmit the signal to another one. 
So how is Fugufish related to this biology stuff? The next issue that nature has successfully solved is that there are voids between neurons. So this chain is not continuous, the neurons are separated from each other by some more or less empty spaces. To bypass the signal through these voids, our neurons use the so-called neurotransmitters. These are tiny particles that govern actually a lot in our brain, for example most of our feelings. When one neuron needs to communicate with another one, it releases neurotransmitters. They just move from one neuron to another and upon arrival the recipient neuron knows, aha, here we go again, I need to bypass the signal. As a result neurons should know when and how many neurotransmitters should be released. And the so-called sodium channels are involved in the mechanism of the signal transduction. Now on the slide you can see a membrane of a cell in which the sodium channel is integrated. This channel can be treated as a switch. If it's open the signal is transmitted and if closed not. Let's look at the molecule that is present in Fugu and is responsible for its toxicity. Well now you can see the skeletal formula and the 3D model of the so-called tetrodotoxin that is present in Fugu fish. This toxin is produced by endosymbiotic bacteria that often seem to be passed down the food chain and these bacteria are the reason why the fugu fish is so poisonous. This neurotoxin reported as a threat to human health in Asian countries has spread to the Pacific and Mediterranean due to the increase of the temperature waters worldwide. And here we come to the most important point. Why is tetrodotoxin so toxic and leads to death in several hours? Tetrodotoxin inhibits the sodium channels and reduces the membrane excitability of vital tissues, of the heart myocytes, skeletal muscles and the central and peripheral nervous systems. Inhibits means that it binds the sodium channel as shown on the video and leads to its dysfunction. Here is just the zoom of the sodium channel structure where the highlighted toxin is bound. What else makes tetrodotoxin so special is that its lethal dose is 275 times smaller than that of cyanide. The cyanide was the very popular poison and a lot of assassinations were performed with it. The lethal dose of tetrodotoxin is just about 6 microgram per kilo of human's weight. It means that the lethal dose of tetrodotoxin for an average adult is 111 times smaller than the mass of the water droplet. And here we come to the quite logical question. What shall I do if I have poisoned myself with tetrodotoxin? Unfortunately, there is no specific treatment for this kind of poisoning and management remains largely symptomatic and supportive. The removal of unabsorbed toxin may be attempted by induced vomiting or gastric lavage or by giving activated charcoal to bind to any unabsorbed toxin. Since tetrodotoxin is less stable in an alkaline environment, installation of 2% sodium bicarbonate has been suggested. Cysteine has also been claimed to be effective in individual cases of pufferfish poisoning. Other advocated treatment options have included cholinesterase inhibitors, naloxone and steroids. In animal studies monoclonal antibodies and 4-aminopyridin have shown promising potential. Surprisingly, detrodotoxin is not found everywhere in this fish. There are specific places where it is accumulated. The highest concentration of tetrodotoxin is found in gonads, especially ovaries, liver, intestine and skin. The body musculature is usually free of poison, that is why the cook should be well educated to remove all dangerous parts of fugu fish. Turning back to the Japanese lady in Singapore, she has survived the puffer fish poisoning. A report was subsequently filed with the National Environmental Agency, who then sent its team to do a check on the restaurant. Puffer fish is partially banned in Singapore. There, restaurants are allowed to import and serve only the flesh of the puffer fish, and special permits are required for this. Importation of the skin, gonads, and other parts of the fish is forbidden. Now you understand why. Well, now you know how, where and why to eat pufferfish. Be aware of the restaurants that may seem suspicious. By the way, it is still a delicacy. Don't forget to give us a like, subscribe to our channel and stay tuned. See you in the next video. Bye.